Hello everybody and welcome back. Right now we are going to see how we can compile our malware to be an executable on Windows and let's see if everything works properly just as we coded it to do. Okay, but before we do that we are going to need a simple program that is going to help us compile the actual malware.c into an exe on Linux. So the program that we are going to need is called i686w64 mean w32gcc or for the 64-bit version the same thing just with x86. In case you don't know that program you can simply just go onto this page right here and it will tell you ming w w64 how to compile Windows exploits on Kali Linux and right here you will have a simple install commands that you need to perform in order to actually get this program on Cal Linux. It's rather simple, so you can simply just do that. And you also have some uh, responses to some type of errors right here that you can also fix if you run into any of these errors. And right now I will write you three different commands uh, that you will use in order to compile a program with the GCC. So if you were to compile a Linux program, or in our case, the server.c because the server.c is something that is going to be ran on Kali Linux you would use a command that looks something like this so gcc and then the server.c and then dash o and then the name that you want to compile it into so let's say just say for example I want to compile it into a name server so it will simply just be called server and that is about it you simply just write this line in the actual command prompt, so let us just see, or pardon me, in terminal, so gcc server.c dash o and then server. Press here enter and let's see the first program ran into an error, so let us see what the error is. So you will see right here there are a bunch of warnings and some errors right here that uh, are actually occurred during the compilation of this program. So as we can see the real error is expected dot and zero instead of two dots, so let's see where that is it is in to go to jump so let's go and nano this server.c and we can see right here it indeed is that uh, two dots and we will just specify instead of two dots dot and comma save it and let's go with the same command once again so gcc server.c dash o and then server and let's see right here what is the warning right now so the compilation finished uh, properly but we got a warning right here in function main warning Passing argument 3 of accept makes pointer from integer without a cast. What we forgot right here is to specify that we want to actually make a pointer at this location of this variable and that's why we need to specify this sign right here. As, as well as we specify the the client actual address, we need to specify the same sign that will point to the memory address of this actual variable. So let's nano, let's first of all remove the compiled version and nano server.c and find the actual line, so here it is, I believe, and right before the client length, we need to also specify this sign, which is going to point to the actual memory location of this variable. So that is the actual error, let's save it, and let's actually compile it for the third time and see if it will work, and as we can see, it worked without giving us any error. So we successfully compiled our server right here without any warning or without any error and now we can go and compile our mal malware.c. So there are actually two commands that you need to write down for the compilation for Windows. One of them i686-w64 dash ming w32-gcc and then you specify dash o for the actual file name that you want to save it as and in our case you want to save it as malware.exe because we are compiling to an exe file so it can run on windows and after it comes the name of the actual file which is malware malware.c okay so this is the actual syntax for the compilation of windows 32 for windows 32 bit and now for the windows 64 bit you would type x86 underscore 64 dash w64 dash ming w32 dash gcc and then the same thing so dash o malware.exe and after it malware.c which is the name of the actual file now this doesn't have to be named malware.exe you can name it anything.exe 
such as here you can name anything.exe and here you can also name this anything um, or you can simply just leave it as a server or any other name whatever you want we're going to use the uh, this command right here to compile our malware.c so we're compiling for the actual windows 32 bit the reason we are doing that is because the windows 32 bit program will run both on windows 64 bit and both and also on windows 32 bit machine therefore we want to create a program in 32 bit so we're going to follow this actual uh, command so right here we're going to specify i686 w64 Okay, so w64 dash and then mink w32 dash gcc. Then we want to specify dash o and call it malware.exe from the malware.c. And if we press here enter, and we can see we're getting some errors right here. Okay, so let's open it up. We can see there are a bunch of errors. So we are possibly missing some type of a uh, Let's go right here. The first error is expected dash and then comma or pardon me expected uh, dot and comma before the actual bracket in the string cat. So let's nano malware.c. Let's first of all fix that error. So what we are missing right here is we are missing a dot and comma right after this line. Let's specify it. Let's save it and compile it once again and let's see what is the next error. As we can see, once again, we are missing the dot and comma in the find window A. That is in the API entry windows main function. So here is where we are missing it. Let's add it. The next one is going to be uh, the two dots. So let me just see why do we have two dots right here. Yeah, it should have dot and comma. So once again, uh, typo so let's go to the to the variables here they are so character server ip has two dots instead of dot and comma let's save it compile it once again uh, let's see where the next error is so under the socket we are missing the dot and comma so let's go there and fix that as well so there are a bunch of actual typo errors nothing really too extreme we can fix that with simply adding the dot and comma so here it is we're missing it right here specify dot and comma and once again let's see right here identified reference to the wsa startup now uh, what this actually means is that we need to specify in the compilation command uh, an actual libraries that we actually used so it can recognize some of the functions that we mentioned in our program such as this one as you can see it didn't manage to compile it so what we're going to do now this is expected and you should remember this once you're compiling this program you want to specify the same command right here just at the end you want to specify two different actual libraries so it can know from where it should search for functions and one of them is lwsoc32 while the second one is dash l uh, w i -E net l w i net or i and i net so this is the actual two libraries that you need to specify in the compilation command so right here the first one once again lwsoc32 and here lwinet so specify here enter yeah we need the capital s right here so let's go and fix it right now let's try to compile it once again and we didn't get any error everything worked properly and now we have our two programs compiled so the next step is to deliver this actual program to the target and run our server right here. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go and type i686 w64 ming dash gcc dash o. Let's call it, for example, right now hello.txe. Let's not call it malware, it's too obvious. Then malware. First of all, let me just. I need to go to the actual c programs and right here run the same command so the same command and then dash l uh, wsoc32 and dash l w 
I and I net and then press here enter so it compiled correctly. Here is the hello.exe. Let me plug in my USB drive and now let's move the hello.exe to the media root and then the USB drive. Okay, good. Right now let's unplug it once again. Let's go to the USB drive, hello.exe, put it on our desktop and now let's run it. As we can see, we got the connection back to our server. And right now we can see the shell is opened from the IP address 192.168.1.5, which is the IP address of my Windows 10 machine. You can see none window is open, so the target doesn't know anything that happened. It probably thinks that the program didn't even start. And right here, if we just try to execute commands, we can see that we get the output back. And right here, let's type IP config. Let's type, uh, for example, netstat-nr. Doesn't even matter. You can go with the, let's type here. We can see everything right here. We can see different directories, different actual folders onto the desktop. But if you try to change a directory, and that is the problem that I talked about, if you try to go one directory back, you will see if you type there once again, we will still be in the same directory. If you try to go, for example, to this programs directory, so CD programs, and type there, you're still going to be in the desktop directory. Okay, so that is something that we need to fix so we can navigate between directories, so we can go to the desktop directory, to the users directory, or wherever we want to go on the target machine. But before we do that, let us specify the Q command and see whether it complete, uh, closed successfully. It did. Since we learned in this video how we can actually compile our server and our malware, in the next video I will show you the function that will fix this problem of us not being able to change directories. Now it's going to be a little bit of a bigger function and a little bit of a harsh syntax, but don't worry. We're simply just going to implement it and see whether it fixes our problem. So hope I see you in the next video and take care. Bye.